welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, December 12, 2017. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Lawyers for both the petitioners and respondents in the election petitions case continue today with strong arguments in the High Court in Kingstown before Judge Esco Henry. Lead counsel for the petitioners, Stanley Stocky John QC, presented what he termed as appealing points and argued that there are principles that were violated to the rules of the electoral process during the December 9, 2015 general elections. The senior counsel for the petitioners further highlighted the importance of the secrecy of the vote, noting that voters should not be disenfranchised. John argued that it was not enough to say mistakes were made, either willfully or erroneously, and strengthened his call for the ballots to be viewed. At the lunch break, our news team spoke with the legal team representing the petitioners. We are asking for inspection of the ballots in all ballot um, boxes and uh, we endeavoured to give the court an overview of the critical issues in the substantive petition, which is in brief that there were uh, many irregularities, but particularly that the ballots were defective and as a result of the defects in the ballots, they were invalid. And if the ballots are invalid, the law says that in those circumstances they should not be counted and the election was not conducted in a manner substantially in accordance with the law as to elections or that the result of the election was affected by these um, defective ballots. Uh, that's the basis on which we are asking the court to allow inspection of the boxes to confirm and verify what we have already indicated through our through the photographs exhibited. It is quite clear to me that as uh, Mendez is probably just going through the motion, perfunctory. What I found very interesting is that he pointed to the form four with the obvious form seven with the obvious error of where they put the ballot, the the um, initial and the, the, for the, the box for the stamp on the counterfoil instead of on the ballot paper. And then he made no comment at all about that and to tell the court that this is a proper form. I'm really amazed at that. If what he's saying is true, then he's therefore admitted that all the ballots are void. Basing his arguments on whether the evidence is sufficient or if there are justifications to inspect the ballot boxes, lead counsel for the respondents, Douglas Mendez, said that an inspection may not be required if the information can be obtained through other means. He questioned if the petitioners put forward enough evidence or if they are trying to look for ballots to find evidence, noting that such evidence should have been put forward already in court before asking for the inspection of ballots and counterfoils. Mendes told the court it is not enough for the petitioners to submit allegations and then make an application to the court for inspection of the ballot boxes. When our news team caught up with the lawyers for the respondents, they were tight-lipped. Well, we're in the process of arguing the matter. It continues this afternoon at 1.30. There's any comments? You, your argument seem that, you know, the pleading the is... is... a lovely sky. It's lovely so blue sky. and so wonderful. <laughs> well, any comments? Any comments? No, my dear. I don't comment on my cases. Sorry. No, you don't. I'm, I'm doing good. Yes. Yeah, so, but what, how you feeling? This afternoon, in terms of the case and so forth, how are you feeling? Good, man, good, thanks. Okay, and Mr. Asafan, any comments? Any comments so far in terms of how things are going? What a lovely day. The election petition case continues tomorrow at the High Court at 9 a.m. In an attempt to foster more efficient and effective community engagement practices, as well as enhance integrated community development frameworks here in SVG and throughout the Caribbean region, a four-day workshop dealing with these issues got on the way here today at the Blue Lagoon Hotel. Funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, the CDB, through the Basic Needs Trust Fund, the BNTF, participants at the training workshop are drawn from Grenada, St. Lucia, Dominica and host St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Nikita Tony tells us more in this report. Aimed at increasing community participation along with the level of sustainable development within communities as a means of building climate change resilience, 
A four-day regional training workshop on community engagement and integrated community development commenced here earlier today, Tuesday, December 12th, at the Blue Lagoon Hotel. Hosted by the Ministry of National Mobilization, the workshop is funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, through the Basic Needs Trust Fund, BNTF, and will focus on combining theoretical and practical exercises to broaden the participants' knowledge on effective community engagement techniques. In her welcoming remarks, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Mobilization Narissa Macmillan noted that the four-day workshop creates an avenue for participants to chart a way forward as to how their respective countries can rebound from the effects of climate change. Our capacity to respond and to militate against climate change, global warming, adverse weather conditions by whatever name we wish to call it, would be dependent on our ability as individuals and as communities to recover from any disaster. You'd be better able, whether you're here in St. Vincent or for our colleagues who have journeyed, would be in a better position to deal with such activity. Portfolio Manager of the Basic Needs Trust Fund BNTF Initiative at the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, George Yearwood, said true community development work is built on strong and sustained partnerships. Quality reduction, sustainability, and resilience are key considerations for the CDB. In addition, working with the various ministries with responsibility for community development across the region is embraced and we recognize the salience of dovetailing what we do at the BNTF into broader, broader strategic national and community development agendas and plans. Minister of Agriculture Sabota Caesar, responsible for the local BNTF program, said community development as it regards to climate change resilience has to go beyond the context of just the national geographical space. A disaster can be so devastating that within the national space there's no organization, there is no institution that can be up and running within the short term. And I think that a very important pillar in us addressing the issue of resilience and resilience building is how can we have some islands prepared to help others within the first 24 hours, the first 48 hours. And I think that this year we lacked that sort of organized preparation. In his address, Minister with Responsibility for Community Development, Frederick Stevenson, said the four-day workshop is an important step in the journey towards making community interventions more sustainable. It is therefore necessary that communities build social capital by participating actively and effectively in the decisions that impact their daily lives, that of their families and their communities. By saving more lives, enhancing livelihoods and becoming more prepared, as we face the consequences of a changing climate and other socio-economic development challenges. The four-day workshop is expected to provide information geared at improving the skill set of all participants so as to enable more effective community engagement and development in their respective countries. Nikita Tony reporting for SVG TV News. Educators and all other stakeholders here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are being encouraged to work together in developing a national action plan geared towards the protection of the nation's children. This encouragement comes from head of the Social Development Unit at the OECS Commission, Grace Ann Cornwall, as she spoke at the opening of two days of consultation where stakeholders are expected to develop a national action plan. Cornwall said, while SVG has made some progress in relation to the implementation of policies geared towards the protection of children, there are still too many reports of child abuse and neglect. Just going through the report, I would have read that um, the number of cases of abuse reported to the Child Protection Division of the Ministry of National Mobilization, Social Development and Youth revealed that between 2014 and 2015 that there were a total of 20. 251 reported cases of abuse across various types of abuses reported. Now this is 251 cases, too many. And in fact, neglect, neglect and physical 
sexual abuse accounted for two-thirds or 65 percent of all the reported cases for the period of report and it therefore says to us that over the three days and i have to underscore for the sake of our children um let's get this let's get this right cornwall highlighted some of the features the action plan should contain l an action plan that leverages support from the public and private sector engagements the attention given to the protection of our children is the interest of the NGOs, IDPs, public sectors, private sectors, and overall the citizens of the OECS. Friends, it is no mystery that we're doing this at the end of 2017 because what it says to all of us that we will be energized and renewed to continue our commitments in 2018 and beyond. So as we enjoy ourselves for the next few days, I'm going to encourage all of us to think again for the sake of our children. Thank you. Also given remarks at the opening ceremony was Minister of National Mobilization, Frederick Stevenson, who stated that his ministry and the government of SVG on a whole take the issue of child protection very seriously. The important thing is that we have to work in collaboration with all ministries and all the stakeholders who are involved in the, in the protection of our children. No one agency cannot protect the, the, the children of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we have to forget our egos sometimes and work together for the benefit of all. And I'm happy that um, I've seen the, the report from my good friend um, Jacqueline Seeley Burke um, and I want to commend her for the, the, the tremendous work that she's been doing here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and in the OECS region in trying to help us all to advance and to develop and to ensure that the issues in relation to, to child protection um, is, on the, is on the fore burner. Prominent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment, Cuthbert Knights, says persons interested in getting into the medical field must adopt an attitude of excellence. Knights, who was speaking at the 16th White Coat Ceremony of the All Saints School of Medicine on Saturday, commended the students for making the necessary sacrifices to serve others. He, however, encouraged them to have a continued approach of excellence, which he said would take them to higher heights in the profession. How significant the white coat is that you have received today. You have worked tremendously hard to get to where you are today. You might have doubted yourself. I'm sure you had challenges in getting here. You have made tremendous sacrifices. I said you may have questioned your abilities, but you're, you're here. As you embark upon your professional education, I just want to say to you, follow your dreams. Follow the path on which you have set out. This is just the beginning. You have a long road ahead of you. Explore all your opportunities. Keep your options open. Just fix your eyes on what is possible, and you will be successful. Minister of Labor, Sabota Caesar, who also spoke at the event, reiterated the importance of having pride in one's work and of leaving behind a distinguished legacy. There are many students in many different institutions who are not successful in attaining the desired requirements to reach to your levels of matriculation. It is also a period not only to celebrate and to reflect, but most importantly, it is a moment for preparation. You have your life ahead of you. And one thing I want to underscore to us all, as budding professionals, 
You must do your work in such a way that you leave a legacy, a good legacy behind. You must do your work with great pride, honesty, and respect. Airway Representative Cecil Sesmaki said with further developments coming to the Arnesville area, notably the acute hospital, the service of medical practitioners will be further required. And from the 14th of December, when we would have scheduled flights from Toronto as well, and very shortly we should be able to announce scheduled flights from various states in the United States of America. And we're working hard as well to get flights in from the UK. So your individual responsibility as medical professionals and the responsibility of all saints will increase because you're also here when we're enjoying our best cruise tourism season ever with 23% increase in the number of arrivals and over 200% increase in the capacity that those arrivals will bring. More demand on the system, more demand on our medical personnel. Family members and well wishes of inmates at Her Majesty's prisons are being encouraged not to engage in activities which could put the yearly prison week activities in jeopardy. The advice comes from Superintendent of Prisons, Brenton Charles, as he highlighted an activity which he said inmates looks forward to every year. Superintendent Charles stated that the prison will soon be opened up to family members of inmates for a family day so that they can bring various goodies and Christmas cheer and encourage them not to put this activity in jeopardy through illegal activities. Um, next Monday, we're going to open up so that your families can bring the, the goodies that we are accustomed to at Christmas time. Right? Um, I want you to encourage your families not to try to involve in any illegal practices. Um, because one sign of any legal practices, we got the hard things. And I want to make sure everybody have a wonderful and blessed Christmas. Yeah. So let us let us be clean. Let us do things as they ought to be done, um, so we could have a good and jolly time behind the prison walls here. Okay. Highlighting what can be described as a Christmas gift from the crew Logos Hope, which recently visited St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Superintendent Charles encouraged inmates to make full use of the library. The people on the board Logos, Logos Hope, they just visited and left our shores. But they made a significant contribution to the prison's library. I think that contribution will cost over $20,000. Over $20,000 worth of books. And while we are going about the, the organization of the library, I want to make it as easily accessible, accessible as possible. I want every inmate, every inmate to make use of the library. Police have arrested and charged 23-year-old laborer Lenny Shallow of Lomans Hill and 42-year-old Wendy Trotman, a domestic of Lago Height, for having in their possession one 9mm Beretta pistol, one revolver and one firearm, type and serial number unknown, without a firearm license issued under the Firearm Act. They were also charged for having in their possession 13 rounds of 9mm ammunition without a license issued under the Firearms Act and for the cultivation of six material plants of cannabis at Lomans Hill on Sunday, December 10th. Shallow pleaded guilty on all counts, while Trotman pleaded not guilty and the charges against her were withdrawn. Shallow will return to the Serious Offences Court on Wednesday, December 13th, 2017 for sentencing. Providing opportunities for persons to improve their personal and professional lives, the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers Cooperative Credit Union, the SVG TCCU, has for the past 40 years focused on offering excellent services and convenience for its members. In keeping with this mandate, 
The financial institution on Monday afternoon officially opened its first ATM service at its headquarters in Kingstown. Speaking at the opening ceremony, President of the SVG TCCU, K. Martin Jack, said the credit union continues to forge ahead in its efforts to become the premier financial institution here in SVG. She said the long-awaited launch of the ATM services puts her organization on par with other financial institutions. The launching of our ATM service under the team Access to Your Money. The IT department must be commended for their hard work in ensuring that the ATM dream has become a reality. One of the goals of the Teachers Cooperative Credit Union has always been to offer our members better services than our competitors. The launching of this ATM is also a further step in bringing our members the financial dignity all people deserve. The Teachers Cooperative Credit Union has always been one with foresight and has always made a commitment to our members to use new technologies to expand our products and services. Martin Jack outlined how members can access the ATM services. Members can now access their Teachers Cooperative Credit Union account anywhere in St. Vincent and the Grenadines where there is a Bank of St. Vincent and the Grenadines ATM. Our partnership with the Bank of St. Vincent and the Grenadines allows our members to access their Teachers Cooperative Credit Union account using their Teachers Cooperative Credit Union ATM card. At Teachers Cooperative Credit Union, their ATM members can deposit or withdraw funds from their special savings account, pay loans, check their balances. At the Bank of St. Vincent and Grenadines ATMs, members can withdraw funds from their special savings accounts. The SVG TCCU president further thanked all members for their continued loyalty and support. Cooperative Credit Union is always pleased to conduct business with you, our members. In this Christmas season, I encourage you to make use of our various services, especially our Christmas loan special. Our friendly and helpful loans officers are ready and willing to help. A word of caution, spend it wisely. Christmas provides us the opportunity to focus on our achievements over the past year and prepare for the year ahead. Let us, together with God's help, ensure that 2018 does bring us the success we so look forward to. Thank you.